What's up guys? Today we're doing a feasibility experiment to determine whether or not it is practical to skip the anode casting process using a technique I call the anode basket. And we're going to grow some crystals of pure copper using this anode basket, something like this here. We're going to try plating. This was just the initial test. But taking everyday precious metal, e-waste and stuff like that and getting the gold out of it without having to go through the energy intensive process of casting anodes. And this is the anode digester basket. And this is our test cell to determine whether or not this is a pragmatic method at all. So let's get on with it. Okay, I have an air sparge in place just to circulate the electrolyte because if you don't have electrolyte circulation, you'll get these dead zones up against the electrode plate and dead zones are what allow impurities to plate out as long as you don't have any dead zones only copper will plate out of the solution this is what happens when your energy density is too high now this is pure copper it just doesn't have that beautiful appearance because the crystalline structure is a little different see if i can zoom in on any of this any We were at a very high energy density, and high energy density promotes the production of powder versus crystals. Okay, this is about 13 hours in. Sure enough, there's quite a bit of vapor coming out of this thing. The crystals are huge. Can't really get a good look at them, but this is 21 hours. Now the optimal bath temperature is about 150 degrees Fahrenheit or 60 degrees Celsius. We're only at 104. I'm not too worried about that right now. The main purpose of this experiment is to determine the behavior of the stainless steel anode basket and whether or not we can digest common materials before smelting them. Okay, so we're 24 hours in, guys, and as you can see, we have definitely digested some material. This thing was filled all the way to the top. Okay, so here's 24 hours. As I said, we can stop this crystal growth by covering the edges up and smoothing off some of the uh, rough surfaces. So here is 34 hours of crystal growth. Um, last time I touched them, they're quite strong. I'd hate to break one off. I'm about to weigh this thing, but just for the sake of it, we'll tear off this little middle one in here. They're very tough. Watch this. That is 210.92 grams with all that copper on it. I'm going to go ahead and try and tear some of these crystals off of here. Let's tear this out. We're going to tear the anode basket open too. Oh yeah, these crystals are tough. They do not break off easily. So you could have a very high turbulent flow in a cell with copper and wouldn't have to worry about busting these crystals off. I don't think you can sell these though. I think they only want to buy the plate. I don't know the answer to that. Here, why am I wearing gloves for the copper? I need these for acid. They're, they're ruined anyway. I don't want to lose any of this because I'm going to weigh what's inside the anode basket too and see what our yield is and see if how much of this came out of the solution itself some of that thicker action yeah that's a really thick piece of metal there impressive yeah 
This is like a solid brick. That's a big old thick piece, fellas. That's like a 20 gauge. Yeah, them corners are holding out on me. Very strong. Look at that bad boy, you hear that? That is stiff copper. Okay, let's ball that up a little bit, so. Oh. This is the last experiment we'll be doing with this plate. Um, we're gonna build the actual cell now. This gave us the information we need. I learned a lot of things. I learned where not to put thermal couples and stuff like that. And these edges will have to be covered and this surface will need to be polished. Anytime you got those imperfections, that's where the little crystals start to grow. We want plate. We don't want these crystals. And I know how to do that. So what do we got there? 86 grams was the copper yield. Okay, so here's the anode, and I notice a lot of copper powder coming out of it because this filter is just not up to par. The bottom of the jar also contained a lot of copper powder. So this filter is not a good enough mesh. That was eight bucks down the drain, but I'm not sad about it. You can see the copper powder coming out of it right now. I'm hoping we don't see a lot of damage to the basket itself. That would be ideal. Oh yeah, look at all that copper powder in there. We lost a significant amount. We were filled to the top, guys, with uh, materials. It looks like the uh, stainless steel is damaged a little bit. It's very thin stainless though, and it's not a very high grade at all. That's not the end of the world. I'm not too worried about that. Look at that. That is proof that we are indeed digesting the copper filings. So we do not need to cast those into anode bars. I wouldn't worry about this screen being eaten up. This is definitely the side facing the um, cathode. That's very minimal. Now I need to dump this into a tray and um, weigh it. You know what though? Darn it, it's wet. Oh well, how much water could be there? Okay, I know for a fact we had like 170 grams that I put in there. And I'm showing about 80 wet. We definitely ate a bunch of that wire up. Didn't eat all of it, but a lot of it was eaten. This looks like a piece of the copper pipe. One side of that was completely eaten up. Looks like one of these pieces started getting digested. You can tell by the black anode sludge on it. So, not the most scientific uh, way of weighing things up here, but we are at 85 grams of material. We did suffer some minimal damage, but I would imagine that's because of the high energy density of this area. This means this did get eaten up and did go into the solution, but that does not mean that that went into our copper based on the electrochemical series and the composition. Look how shiny that is. That's a uh, some good good looking pure copper right there guys so this is a great sign i'm, I'm not phased by this at all this is a very minimal amount of uh, erosion because we could always make our anode 
basket out of some type of like special graphite parts, you know, made out of, you know, shapes and tubes. Stainless steel three or 316 stainless would hold up far better than this. Okay, it was not magnetic stainless. So it's, it's still, I guarantee it's a low grade stainless because this is gutter screen. This is just made for a gutter on your house. So there's no way that they splurge for some good 316 on this. So if we add some good metal, we're gonna try some 304. This is gonna be our anode basket, so to say. This is gonna be the bottom of it. And all the electrolytes gonna flow from the bottom up through the top to carry that sludge out. Though I gotta admit there wasn't a lot of sludge in here for the simple fact, this was already some fairly pure stuff, guys. Not all of it, this stuff here wasn't pure. This thing surely wasn't. But yeah, that is so cool. I mean, look at these crystals. How pure that is. I don't know if you're focusing in on this or not. Really, really cool. I'm going to call that a win. We successfully bypassed the anode smelting and casting process, guys. Man, that is just a solid chunk of copper right there, fellas. It won't even bend right there. Look at that. Tell you what I'll do. Give me a set of calipers here. We need this info anyway. 0.89 millimeter there. Okay, 86 grams of copper yield off of 35 square centimeters per side here. The one side barely had anything on it at all. Contents of the anode basket, we did indeed digest a lot of those copper filings. You can see the remnants of them. We made some beautiful heavy duty 0.6 millimeter plate here This is very pure stuff right here Those different colors are based on energy density changes it goes from powder to crystal If your energy density gets too high you start to powder up That doesn't necessarily reflect its purity um, This black color you see here is some anode mud that I accidentally dripped onto it from messing with this stuff. But uh, for the most part, I'm just amazed at how complete of a piece of metal this is. This is hev heavy cladding. I mean, that's a piece of metal. That's not what you would expect. I mean, I can't bend that with my fingers. Well, it's sharper than hell for one thing. That is solid piece of copper. Very hard stuff. So I'm calling the experiment a success. We had 85 grams. I think we started off with 175 grams. 176 grams we started off with. And this is just kind of me keeping track. We're going to have our conclusion up here in mass. I think it was 85 grams. I'm not going to write that in yet because I don't know. We ran for 34 hours. And, um, yeah. Total success. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy about this. I can build a machine now that enables us to bypass the um, anode casting process all together we do not need to cast anodes i would imagine you could even throw highly contaminated copper filings in there maybe get it a little cleaner than that but what i'm saying is i don't think a little bit of plastic here and there would hurt too terribly much because my system's going to circulate i'm going to be using a high flow circulation to continually knock that anode sludge off to kind of help uh expedite the process that's the last test we will do with that little cell now i'm going to go on ahead and build something